I've known everybody in my friend group since about kindergarten, first grade, second grade. I've met everybody there in that span. We kind of just all kind of grew up together. So baseball has always been our, our biggest bond. And then recently uh, we've all been picking up our licenses. So we've all been driving, spending a lot of time at the beach. Me and my friends, when we get in the water, when it's cold at the beach, we just like to sprint. Cause if you tiptoe, you're, you're not gonna, not gonna wanna do it. So we just scream no fear and run in the, run in the ice cold water. He had a coach that one day just always talked about having no fear. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of times in his life where we're like, are you sure you want to do that? And he's like, no fear, Dad. You know, we had some issues having kids, right? I mean, there was, I think there was three, if not four, um, miscarriages throughout throughout that whole process. You know, luckily to, you know, acupuncture and, and um, some other things that Dee Dee was able to have Brayden. We'd always considered him as kind of like our miracle child because having him was not easy. He made us parents and he gave us like that happiest day of our life. Jeff like placed him in my arms and we looked at each other and I think we were kind of incredulous. I think we were kind of like, is he real? Like, do we, yeah. do we actually do this? I, I just remember being <laughs> scared to death because it was like, okay, the baby's out of the womb and now it's our 100% our responsibility to make sure that this little thing is you know moving forward in the right direction. I probably don't remember anything before I left before I left the house because it has become so routine of who does what and did fix Braden and sit and do this and that. So essentially we woke up Everything's normal in the morning. Sometimes I'll get up, we'll, we'll make him breakfast before he goes. I was teaching and it was about, I guess, 11.25 or 11.26. And um, I went to get my phone to set a timer for an activity for my students. So I picked up my phone to set the timer and, and I had a text from Brayden and he never texts me. And I read it and it said, Hi, Mrs. Callahan, it's Matthew. Brayden's been stabbed twice, but he's still breathing. They're wheeling him out now. This has been a very nerve wracking afternoon for parents with students here at Countryside High School after Clearwater police say a ninth grade male student stabbed two other students, sending them to the hospital. One of my most vivid memories is looking up at my friend Matthew. He's talking me through it, and he's talking me through it. And I said, Matthew, I'm gonna die. Matthew, I'm gonna die. And I just started repeating that. And he just was saying, no, you're not, Brady. No, you're not. Just keep breathing, keep breathing. So as I got on the car, the assistant principal called from Braden school. And I said, I'm coming to the school. And he said, don't come to the school. He's on his way to St. Joseph's in Tampa. I couldn't believe that when we heard that he was there already and he was being admitted to surgery already and we were just barely like getting across the bridge. I was like, oh, he got there so fast. And I knew that they started straight away. They're like, oh, he's headed into surgery now. That was frightening and also reassuring that as soon as like the ambulance hit the tarmac, they were ready for him. One of the scary, very scary moments, Edie asked the doctor, well, is, is he gonna live? And the doctor rightfully said, you know, I, I don't know if he's gonna I don't live. Know yet. And at that point, we're like, oh my gosh, our son might die, right? And it was scary. But he was, he was very clear on what he did and very clear that he, he had done everything to the best of his abilities. And then shortly after that, we, we, he was able to, Brayden was able to go to the, the ICU. We take care of sick children in this unit. So sick in the sense, children who need, um, um, who are sick from any multiple reasons. They can be in the ICU like involved in a car accident, having respiratory failure, having bad pneumonias, having um, bad anemias or bad or oncological patients who need um, more support and care than which can be provided on a regular pediatric floor. I remember that once he came to the our ER and you know, they did a fantastic job getting all the imaging and then I remember the ER attending calling me to tell me that there is a kid um, who sustained certain injuries from probably like an unprovoked random stab wound in the, at school. And then he'll be coming to us uh, after the surgical procedure. I was just praying for God to touch the surgeon and to, and to just be with him and his gift and just 
save save my son. And I really felt throughout the whole process of the nine to 10 days that we were there, from the very beginning, we, we felt like the care that we were getting, that we were the only people in the hospital. An hour later, he came to us from the operating room. Uh, very nice kid. <laughs> he was really in good spirits, even though he was going, he has gone through like a life-threatening injury. And we were talking to the family, explaining to them, you know, why he has a chest tube and what kind of surgery was done to him, and you know, like um, what's the plan. Every 30 minutes, that was there was another nurse checking on me, checking my vitals, asking if I need anything. They act like it is just. I mean. Every single person is just the most important. They never forgot his name. They remembered Logan's name. If they wanted gaming things so that they could play together. If Logan wanted to stay later uh, because they were kind of sitting up, kind of hugged up watching TV once and they're like, it's okay, he can stay. I just, I felt like they really respected the family unit and they knew how, how important that was. I felt like they wanted to make him better as soon as possible and they would just do anything anything in their power to do that. Every time they went into the room, they had something positive to, to tell me. They had something that I could look forward to. I think that care made him feel like, I am getting better. I don't think enough can be said about how your mental health can affect your physical health. Obviously, we don't want folks to have to walk through what we had to walk through. But if they did have to go through it, they would want to go through it with the, with the team and the family and the organization at St. Joe's. We are not a fun place to be, to be honest, uh, for any family or any parent or any child. If your child is here, we would want to be the state of the art in every sense of the word to better take care of our children, which involves investing in the best and the latest technology latest equipment, latest training to handle those equipments to meet the standard of care and even exceed it so that we can best serve the children of Tampa Bay area. A couple of weeks after he came out of the hospital, they loved to go to Honeymoon Island. Him and his buddies, they all go out there. I remember the first day that he, he came home after that and he goes, Dad, I'm sure glad I didn't die. He goes, because I just had the best time with my boys and we just had a blast. He's back with his friends and he's back on the field and charging it as always, like not holding back and being brave and smiling. He has that happy spirit and his body is healed and we have 100% St. Joseph's to thank for that. That our son is here whole, back together and, and doing what he loves. It's just because of St. Joseph's, they saved his life. Back to life.